Guys, we're in Luke 15, and we're in this uh, chapter, which has a, a sort of a, a triptych of parables. You've got the lost sheep, you've got the lost coin, and you've got the lost son, as it's normally described. Now, what's going on? Well, we're answering the question, um, the objection really that people have, one of the real reasons why people, it seems to me, seem impressed with Jesus, but don't commit to following him. An objection people raise, it goes like this. You want me to follow Christ with you, but I don't like the people he's got with him. There's some reason, perhaps there's some experience I've had, perhaps there's something in my past that leads me to think, I don't want to be part of those people. I don't want to do with that. Something they do, whether it's some ancient rite, whether it's some image they have, whether it's some unacceptability to me, of the people who follow Jesus. And that's a very, very, very immensely common objection to actual people following Jesus. And sometimes, of course, it's because Christians behave badly. It happens. That even good people do bad stuff. Maybe it's because Christians have sort of had emphases put to them or picked up emphases or have got hobby horses or whatever. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's that, you know, sin has reared its head in the church of God. Maybe it's that Christians are not cool and the boot's on the other foot and somebody's saying, you're not cool enough for me. But this objection for a whole range of complicated reasons comes up. You want me to follow Christ with you, but I don't like the crowd he's got with it. That is not a new objection to following Jesus. That is not something that's happened since the 60s or the 70s, or the 80s, AD. <laughs> that is something that is there in Scripture. And there are these three famous parables in Luke 15. Jesus tells the three of them in just one chapter of Luke's Gospel to address the issue. And he doesn't address it the way so many of us seek to address it. As churches in the 21st century. We're going to get to that. You want me to follow Christ with you, but I don't like, don't like the crowd he's got with him. And there's the tax collectors, and there's the teachers of the law. And between the two of them, they look at one another, and what they see is an unacceptable person following Jesus. Now please notice that to make that objection, there's an underlying presupposition to this objection. This objection to following Jesus is that in the absolute sense, you're either a sinner or a saint. And generally speaking, the way those words are used is to misunderstand the way they're used in Scripture for certain. Generally speaking, it's the group of people known as them that are sinners, and the person known as me, or at best us, that are categorised as saints. Right? And people start to get to throw brickbats at one another. It's a pretty large misunderstanding in any event. Because as far as Scripture is concerned, we're all sinners. Aren't we all sinners? Yes, we're all sinners. And the trouble with the Church of God is there's only sinners to make it out of. But some of that universal category of sinners are being transformed, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, into saints. Just hold that thought while I shoot off at the tangent. Have we come across cool Christianity? This is one of the responses we get out of the 21st century Western Evangelical churches to this objection. People object to us for one reason or another. What we need to do is be cool. Well, hang on. You can't make Christianity cool. Two reasons in the main. The first is that you're trying to make Christianity pleasing to a world that is fundamentally unacceptable to God. And then, that's a kite that won't fly. And then, the second is, you've only got unacceptable and imperfect people, sinners, to do church with. And then on top of that, God has declared this is the way he wants to do it anyway. He wants cool and uncool and whatever else you've got in his church, because when God builds church, he does it motley. So what we need to do then is to build a clearer view of Christianity. Not try to make Christianity seem cool. If we're going to object, deal with this objection people have to following Christ, because it is of the glory of the gospel. That God builds his church with people who are unacceptable. Does that make sense? Shall I stop now? Is that enough? <laughs> Let's look at Luke 15 and see what we